At the end of yesterday's lesson, we learned that strings are arrays, and you might think to yourself, well, what is an array? If I were going to define array, I would say that it is a group of like values. The key phrase being like values, because we can have an array of characters, which a string is, or we can have an array of integers, or an array of XML documents, or an array of strings, but we can't have an array that contains each of those types of data. An array has to be of a specific data type and only values of that type can be stored in an array. There's no doubt that arrays are helpful. In fact, in the case of the string class, which is an array of characters, we would have a hard time storing words or phrases or anything else that a string can contain without an array. Uh, because a string is an array of characters. But there is a limitation to arrays, and that is they are fixed length. Whenever we create an array, we have to specify its length, and we do that either by explicitly giving it a length or by assigning the uh, data that we want to be stored within that array. So whenever we create an array, we cannot change its length. Of course, we can put less data inside of it, but that array still has the length that we defined it as, and we can't grow that array either. So there is some limitations that we will actually break tomorrow with a different type of collection. The arrays are very strict, very limited, but we have another type of collections that uh, we can use if we need more flexibility. But that's tomorrow. Today we need to learn how to create arrays. And we do so very easily. And in fact, whenever you learn how to create an array for one data type, you know how to create an array for any data type. So let's create an array of characters. We are basically going to kind of do the same thing as a string, but not actually create an actual string. Okay, so to create an array, we first specify the data type that we want to create or that we want to contain within this array. So a character in this case, and then we want to say that this is going to be an array. So we use square brackets and we don't put anything inside of them. And then we have the name of our array, foo, in this case. Now you can notice there is a pattern here that's being used here. And that is because the args parameter is an array of strings. So as I said, whenever you know how to create an array for one data type, you know how to create them all. So we want to actually create this array. So we will use new followed by the data type. And in this case, we are going to be explicit as to its length. We will not assign data to it yet, but we will give it a length of 10. Actually, let's do a length of five. And that's it. We have now created an array of characters. So now let's assign values to each of the what are called elements of the array. And the elements are each item within the array. We have a length of five, so we can store five characters inside of this array. And to do that, we use their index numbers. So we start at index zero. We will assign it a character of H. And for the index of one, we will do E. For the index of 2, L, we will do the same thing for index 3, and index 4 will contain O. So the array is going to contain characters H, E, L, L, and O. And of course, if we wanted to, we could turn this into a string and have the string hello. Well, let's do that. Well, not necessarily create a string from this character array, but let's print these characters out to the console window so that it looks like a string. And to do that, we will use a for loop. Our counter, I'm going to call i. We are going to run this loop for as long as i is less than foo.length. Every array has a length property. And then we will increment i one at a time. Now we want to do console.write because we want this to look like a string. And then we need to write the value of each element in the array. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have used the index notation here by using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have assigned each index a value. So we could kind of do that here, but whenever we hard code 
an index value, we are only going to get the value at that index. So for the code that we have here, we would get five H's. And just to show you, uh, there we have five H's followed by the press any key to continue. Let's write an empty line to put that on a new line. So we have five H's. That's great. We have <laughs> the first letter down. But inside of this loop, we need to specify each index independently. Well, we can do that because we have a counter. And the counter starts at zero. And we are incrementing it one at a time, which is basically the index of every element in this array. So instead of hard coding the index, we can just use I. Run it again, and there we go. Hello. So for each iteration, I increments and therefore addresses a different index within the foo array. We could get the same results using a for each loop because we haven't really done anything else with the counter. Uh, all we have used it for is to get the element or the corresponding element in the foo array. So we could just do for each character C in foo. Write it to the console. So console write C, and we get the same results. Now you can see that there's a natural relationship between loops and arrays. Most of the time, if you are going to use a loop, you're doing so to iterate over an array. And it's really what you need to do that determines what loop you are going to use. If all you need is each element in the array, the for each loop is going to work just fine for you. But if you need the counter or the index number or anything like that, then the for loop is going to work better for you. Now, I personally don't like defining an array in this way. Uh, it's nice that we can do this, but there are some problems, at least as far as I'm concerned. Let's say if we wanted to change this array to contain a length of 13 so that we could fit Hello World. First, we would have to change the length, and then we would have to specify each index, or at least each element's value. So in order to go all the way to the exclamation point at the end of world, we would have to specify foo and then the index and then the value. That's just more headache than I want to go through. Now, there are going to be some times when we do have to create arrays in this way because we might not know the values that we want to store in each element, but we know the length at least. So this way can be useful, but in instances where we do know the values, it's a whole lot easier just to use a different syntax. And it starts off kind of the same way, except we don't specify the length. We just don't specify anything. But we follow the closing square bracket with a curly brace. And then inside of the code block, let's go ahead and complete the code block, we specify the values. And we don't have to specify indexes or anything like that. The values are automatically created starting at index 0. So we have H, which is going to be at index 0. But then in order to specify the E, we have to use a comma, because this separates one element from the next. So we do E, and then we do L, the next L, and then we do O, and we don't have to use a comma after O because O is the last character in our array. Now, if we were going to go to Hello World, of course, we would want to put a comma and then the character comma and go through all of that, but we won't go there. So this creates the same array as we did before. Each character is at the same index as it was before, but we did so using less code. So anytime you do the same thing with less code, it's always a plus in my book. So how you create an array is going to be determined by your specific needs. If you already have the information that you want to store within the array, by all means, use this shortened version of array creation. I mean, after all, it's less code. But if you don't have that information, if you get it later in your code, but you do know that you need an array, and you happen to know how long it's going to be, or, or its size, then go ahead and create the array, and then use index notation to assign values at each index 
of the array. But we're not done with arrays. Uh, we are today, but tomorrow we are going to look at another feature of C-sharp, which uses an array uh, with parameters. And it's not necessarily what we see here within this main uh, parameter. Uh, we have a different way of specifying an array of parameters, essentially. So it's a nice feature that C-sharp has, and we will look at that tomorrow. And then the day after that, we will look at collections, which are a lot like arrays, but they are much more flexible. So that's it for the day. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow.